In today's video, you're going to learn how to code split within React. If you have not seen my video on what code splitting is and you're not super familiar with what it is, I would check that out before watching this video. All right. So how do you actually perform code splitting within React? Well, the way that this is done within React is you can use a method from React. And this method is react.lazy. So using the React object, so you can import React from React. And then on that React object, you can access the lazy method. You could also just import lazy from React and do kind of a named import and use it that way as well. So you don't have to use the dot notation. But you are going to use this lazy method from React. And this is going to allow you to lazily load a component. And the way that this is going to work is you're going to use react.lazy to dynamically import a component from a certain file. And then what's going to happen is that the only time that that code is actually going to be shipped to the browser is when you first render that component to a page. So if you don't need to render that component to a page, it's, it's not going to ship that code to the browser. All right. So let me show you an example of what this actually looks like. So as you can see here, this is straight from the React docs here. The react.lazy function lets you render a dynamic import as a regular component. So the before is you just import a component from a certain file. So in this example, import other component from this file name. And this is not lazily loading a component. This will include this component in your overall bundle that you ship to the browser right away. However, you can use the react.lazy method, as I said earlier, to dynamically import the component just as you see here. So you call the react.lazy method, and that method is going to take a function. And the return value of that function here should be you calling the import method. All right, so you can also use this import method within your React applications. And this is React's way of supporting a dynamic import. So what's gonna happen here is that, as you can see straight from the docs, this will automatically load the bundle containing other component when this component is first rendered. So when you kind of code split your application, it's gonna split your entire application into different chunks. And based on where you use react.lazy, it's going to create a new chunk for that component. And it's not going to ship that chunk of code or that smaller bundle of code to the browser until this component is actually first rendered to the page. So this kind of lazily loads this component for when it's actually needed instead of just upfront. So the non-lazily way to do it is right here. You just use the import statement and then you give your component a name and then from a file name. And then the way to lazy load a component is you actually assign react.lazy, passing it a function, and then using the import statement and passing in the path in which you want to import the component. And then you assign that to the name of your component. So then you would use these the same way within your application you would use other component and other component exactly the same. But this one is just an import statement here. And this one, you're assigning this variable other component. They make it a constant here. And I, in general, would recommend making this a constant. And they assign that to the return value of calling React lazy. And then within React lazy, passing an inline function here and calling the import statement, passing in the file name where this component lives. All right. So this will lazily load this component for when it's first rendered on the page. And as you can see in the React docs here below, the react.lazy takes a function that must call a dynamic import. So calling this right here. And this will return a promise, which will resolve to kind of this module right here. And we'll, we'll call about the kind of default exports here in just a bit. But heading back here, one thing that's important to remember when lazily loading components is that you must render a lazily loaded component within a suspense component. And you must provide this suspense component a fallback prop. And the reason you need to do this is because, all right, when you lazily load a component, when you go to that page, 
you don't already have that bundle of code. So once you go to that page, well, React then needs to like send that bundle of code to the browser and that time takes a little bit. So since you're lazily loading that component, when you first go to that lazily loaded page, it's gonna take a second to load up that page because you haven't sent that code to the browser yet. So while that code is being sent to the browser and you're loading up that page, you need to render some component in the meantime. And kind of a standard thing to do is to render a kind of fallback component that is like a loading indicator, a loading spinner or something like that. So the way that this looks is that if we go down here, as you can see, the lazy component should be rendered within a suspense component, which allows us to show some fallback content while we're waiting for the lazy component to load. So as you can see here, they lazy load the other component right here, and then they import suspense here from React, and then they render out the lazily loaded component within the suspense component. So you pass it in as a child to the suspense component, or you make sure the suspense component wraps around your lazily loaded component. And then the suspense component, it takes one required prop, which is your fallback component. And here they just pass a div element that renders loading. And this could be anything. This could be an entirely different loading component or something like that. But this is going to show when the browser is then loading this lazily loaded component when you first go to the page that uses this lazily loaded component. All right. So anytime you lazily load a component, you must render it within a suspense component and provide it some fallback to show while you are loading up this lazily loaded component here. Now you can also render multiple components within an overall suspense component. So if we look at this down here, you can see that we lazily load these two different components, other component and another component with our react.lazy calls. And then we can render them both within this overall suspense component. So regardless of whether we're first rendering the other component to the page or another component to the page here, either time we do that, we're gonna render this fallback here first while we kind of ship that code to the browser. So you can wrap multiple components at the same time within an overall suspense component. It doesn't have to just be one suspense component wrapping one lazily loaded component. You can have several in there. Now, one thing that can be a little bit tricky with code splitting is deciding where to code split. As you know, you want the performance improvements of code splitting to kind of split up the chunks of your application so you're not shipping all of that code to the browser at that initial load time of your page. However, as I said earlier, we need to render these components within a suspense component and provide that a fallback component. And if you lazily loaded like every component in your page, well, every time you went to like a different part of your page or you go through a different user experience with your page and you render one of these lazily loaded components, well, you're first probably gonna show that loading indicator and then show that lazily loaded component, which can be kind of disruptive to the UI. Now there are different things you can do here, like using different transitions within React so you can avoid these fallbacks, which I'll get to in future videos. But we don't want to lazily load so much that it's becoming disrupted to our UI. And one kind of nice balance here, or a good place to start code splitting, is code splitting on a route level. So say you have like React router set up and you have different path names. So maybe a home page and an account settings page and some other page within your application. Well, you could just lazily load those different pages. And the reason why this might make sense is because for one, you're code splitting probably fairly evenly throughout your application on a per page level and you're not having to send all of your code right away to the browser, which provides those performance improvements. But also, it's probably not super disruptive to the UX because when you transition from one page to the next and just 
most applications, you often expect there to be some kind of a loading to take place. So it's usual to see when you go from the home page to an account settings page in normal applications to see some sort of loading indicator or something like that as it loads up that data. So since users are already kind of used to this experience, it's probably not going to be super disruptive to them. So code splitting on a per route basis can be a good place to start. So the way that this would look is that in this example here, you have the, they're using React Router DOM here, and they basically have their router set up within their overall app component. And then right within the router, they render out a suspense component. And then for every route in their application, these are going to be lazily loaded. So here they say const home is equal to calling the lazy function that is imported with React. This is the same thing as doing as calling react.lazy. They call this lazy function and pass in an anonymous function calling the import statement and the path name to their kind of home page, overall home page component. And they do the same thing for their about page. And they render these two routes here within a suspense component. So this is effectively going to lazily load on a per route basis within their overall app. And you're just gonna show this loading indicator when you're transitioning here between routes, which probably doesn't disrupt the UI, but you do get the benefit of not needing to send all of the code for the home page and the about page up front. So you could potentially just have a sign in page that you ship right away and that is you know, super quick and provides good user experience. But then when you log in and you head to the home page, then you would load this loading indicator for a sec. You would send the home page that code to the browser, and then you would render that to the page. So this is probably a good place to start when it comes to lazily loading throughout your application to provide kind of a nice balance between UX and also gaining those performance improvements from code splitting your application. Now, one thing to note is that when using react.lazy, it only supports default exports. You cannot use named exports when using React Lazy. Now, one solution here is using an intermediate file export, which I'll show you in a second. But just remember that when using React.Lazy, you cannot use named exports and you must use default exports or else you're not going to be able to lazily load those components. All right, so showing you an example here, as you can see right from the docs, React Lazy only supports default exports. And they suggest if you want to use named exports, then you can create an intermediate module. So what this would look like, so you create this intermediate module, then you basically re-export those components as default exports, so you can still use React Lazy. So here, let's say you have several components within a single file, and you use named exports. So export const some component name instead of calling like export default some component name. So you have these named exports and then you want to use these with react.lazy. Well, we can't use these named exports here. So what we have to do instead is in this example, they create an intermediate file called the name of one of these named exports here. So they call this file mycomponent.js and then within this file, all they do is they re-export the my component component as a default export. So they access the mini components.js, this path right here. And then since my component here is a named export, they use the label of my component because that's what's exported here. And then they export it again as a default component. And then since they kind of re-export this as a default, they can now lazily load this component within their application from this mycomponent.js where it's being exported as a default. If this seems a little bit tricky to you, it might be at first, but after doing it, you'll, you'll gain a good understanding of it. All right, now the last thing I want to end on is how do you know if your code splitting is actually working? Well, there's a few things that I would look at. For one, the goal of code splitting is to improve the performance of your application. 
So what I would do is I would create a production build of your application. So you might use NPM build or yarn build or something like that and build the production ready application. And then in the network tab of your browser here, I can go over to the network tab in my browser here, and then I can throttle my browser. So I can go up to this dropdown and I could go to like slow 3G. And then with my kind of bundled application, I could refresh my page here and I could see how long it takes to kind of load up my entire page. And you can look at the kind of time it takes here to load these different bundles. And you can see if you get a performance improvement from lazily loading different parts of your application. All right. Now, additionally, just by seeing the different chunks coming in in the network tab, you know that you are code splitting your application. So if you go back to the network tab, you're gonna see we have all these different like chunks of code here coming in. And after you code split your application, you should see kind of several chunks come in. And before code splitting, you will probably only see like one main JavaScript chunk come in with all of your React code. So if you code splitted correctly, you should see several of these chunks come in. And also to check if your code splitting is working, you can see if your fallbacks are showing when you go to different pages. So if you code split on a per route basis, you can go to a different route and then you can see, okay, is my fallback showing? If it shows for just a little bit and it could be pretty quick, so you might wanna throttle your network tab a little bit, but if it shows your fallback for at least a split second, then you know, okay, I am lazily loading this component. I have set this up correctly. So you can look at the network tab to see your kind of how long it takes to load up your application. And you could also use Lighthouse within your kind of browser tools as well to see like your time to first paint. And if you wanna check out that more on depth, I would just Google uh, Lighthouse time to first paint and you can see like how to do that. I might create a video on Lighthouse in the future because it is a useful tool. And then you can also check the network tab to see several different chunks coming in. And then you can also check and see if your fallbacks are showing and that will kind of tell you, okay, is my kind of lazily loading working here, all right? But the number one out thing I would look at is whether it actually improves your performance because that's kind of your goal with code splitting. And if you notice it's not improving your performance, then you might just be adding complexity to your application for kind of no reason, all right? So hopefully this gives you a good idea on how to code split, how to know if it's working and some different strategies for kind of where code splitting is potentially useful in your application and some things to watch out for. So thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in that next one.